With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. to Real Talk with me, Anneli Mdoda. So the 2018 film and theatre calendar is celebrating the African Renaissance like never before. The colour purple has been described as bold, black and beautiful with vibrant, glorious and uplifting performances. The Grammy and Tony Award winning musical is now at the Joburg Theatre until the 4th of March. You have to get there quickly. Today I share the stage with some of the principal cast but first, this is another big week in film as we all count down to Black Panther. Come on, who isn't? Marvel Comics has a thrilling vision of what's been called the Afro future. Starring the likes of Lupita Nyong'o, Michael B. Jordan and also our very own Dr. John Ghani as well as his son, Atanwa Ghani. Mom Connie Chen is also in it, and South African music features on the soundtrack left, right, and center. 18 films later, Marvel Cinematic Universe finally has an Afrocentric superhero with purpose. Now, the question to you is how many uh, African or South African superheroes do we have? Well, I know of one, and his name is Crazy. The release of Black Panther is a big deal for Crazy's creator, who also happens to be the visual artist, the illustrator, and a painter extraordinaire. Lois Mkize is here. Have a look at this. Crazy's character actually tattooed <laughs> so I'm the Crazy, apparently. It's a cool moment to high school. I was playing balls and jumping. I said, "Come on, we're superpowers." We're gonna be like, "We're gonna be strong." I want them to be strong and have fun with powers. That's what we wanna. They sell them. We're gonna be kibali. We're gonna be like us. We're gonna so. The character also like interprets that and that lifestyle about Lomji Dasaka, see he wants to make something of himself, but like you don't know how much power you hold. I was really amazed though. Like when I saw my name on the newspaper, <laughs> like the father in the cartoon, I was like, yo <laughs> it was like it really felt good. It felt like I have a lot you know, that I have to do for my own life. Okay, wow. so that's your little cousin. Yes, that's actually my younger cousin, Usipe. Oh my word, yeah. you do, I, I don't think he could suffer a confidence problem at all. No. And then you made him a superhero. No. And now he's out here on cover of books. And, <laughs> okay, let's, what, his name is Sipo. Why did you change it from, from Sipo to Crazy then? Um, I think it was mostly for the narrative itself. The character himself gets his powers from the star that appears in the, in the constellation one yeah. day, right? So um, I happen to have a, a cousin whose name is Kwezi, and was Teta in Kwezi, right? So we had to shorten that, oh, and, and you know, th that's where the stars, link is. Stars, okay, right? That's where okay. he gets his powers. But I mean, for him, in his case, I think he had, this is 2013, I think, and he was in matric, yeah. he had this funky hairstyle. I clearly followed suit, right? Yeah. So, uh, for a second, I was like, isn't that you? Nah, <laughs> no, 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 I had okay. a chisco back then, okay. so. Okay. Um, but like uh, he had, he had the energy. He had the the youthful South African, really just an authentic persona that you could only get here. Yeah. And I needed a, a, needed that for for creating a proudly South African superhero, superhero story. And that was the premise. And I just followed it from there until we started, you know, investigating different cultures that yeah. we've got and putting them into the book. So okay, so I'm gonna jump back to jump forward, right? Okay. Let's jump back. So what's your background? What what informs you as, because I mean, you're quite good at these, these things, yeah. these books, these comic books, collector's editions, they're mm. phenomenal. Mm. So what was your background mm. leading up to, you know, the discovery and creation of the superhero quiz? Superhero quiz. So um, before that, I was head illustrator 
writer for Super Strikers, the, the soccer comic Ula, book. Ula, okay. Ah, Ustra, Ushay. Ushay, Ula, Ushay, 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 That's right, yes, that's right. Okay, so let's yes, illustrate yes. that. And, that um, team was always losing, but carry on. Ah, uh, they tried, no. come on. It's like a hero's journey in Dondo, but they didn't lose, didn't they? No, they were always losing. They kind of sucked. It no, 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 I, and I mean that in the best way, but they learned their lesson, and it was like, again, it was a hero's journey, and we had to interpret that for like repeatedly from month to month to month and I, I think I suppose what I learned from that whole experience was number one the professionalism of the industry yeah um, how to tell a narrative okay to, to come up with this narrative number one and how to put it together in such a professional way that you can actually have people go out there and want it and mm. seek it so by the time I was ready to, 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 to jump over to my own project which I had always felt strongly about mm. um, the fact that we always we've never had a, a superhero yeah. story in South Africa and I've always found why why not yeah. and I always thought someone would do it until um, I was lucky enough to be in the position where I could yeah you know? so what does crazy do to because you know like uh, spider-man is Peter Parker and he got yeah. bitten by the spider then he's got the powers mm. you know Batman is just a spoiled brat who's got mm. money so he's got all these toys yeah. um, what how does crazy transform into being a superhero does he eat a gota and then he's like <laughs> yeah you know so oh. there's this so, so the narrative is, is, is starts off um, in the modern day, yeah. where we meet Quasi already having powers, and then we learn that um, three months prior there was a star that appeared in the constellation, which was already in existence millennia ago, okay. and you know there were superheroes back then as well, but disappeared and reappeared now in the modern day. Now here's Quasi, but um, so his journey, like like we saw Sipe just now, he's yeah. a, he's an arrogant little kid. Yes. And, you know, imagine that <laughs> uh, he's 19 years old, a city dweller. And he gets power. So obviously, I mean, I think, you know, ask anybody, I, I believe that when, you know, for him, the answer, and this is what I asked to see here before I even actually illustrated this thing, yeah. was what would you do if you had powers? And this is an honest answer from, from a 19-year-old back then was that, yeah, I was and it go on and on and yeah. on. I was like, that's it, right? You start off as an anti-superhero, and, uh, and as the story progresses, and as your hero's journey yeah. progresses, you start to realize, okay, hang on, there's a, there's a responsibility that comes with this. Which is very indicative of life itself, because there's exactly. very few of us who who can, because I feel everyone's powerful. I feel mm. like you just need to find Indeed. what it is that you're good at, and you can be powerful, and Indeed. you can be a superhero, right? Mm. But when you are younger, mm. Even when you're, you, you're good at what you do and you're on TV and you, maybe you're a soccer player, mm. you don't necessarily know what to do with that power, right? So you mm. are the anti-superhero. And then as you mature sure. and as you grow up, then you find that, oh, okay, with this power, I can do this. let's find purpose, you know, and, and still get the goals. Exactly. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's not forget that. <laughs> let's not, let's forget, not forget that. that. Let's We've got to keep that. it real a bit. <laughs> so, I mean, where, where are we going with this? Are we, are we looking at a movie? Because, I mean, the Black Panther Absolutely. phenomenon is, it's there, it's Absolutely. crazy, and maybe this is next. Absolutely, like uh, like you said earlier on, I'm really excited about it because, you know, when Friday comes, after Friday, after the premiere, there are, people are going to be out on Google being like, do are there superheroes in South Africa, yeah. in Africa, who are they? Let's see. And then that's where the, the conversation starts because that's an American property, right? Yeah. But they're telling a story from the African continent. Yeah. Then the, 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 the attention, the, the, the inquisitiveness of everyone the world over is what's going on there then. And you and are going to be here ready. Like, hey. Like, hey, hey. This is what right we have here. here. Over here, over <laughs> here, right here. Oh, crazy. Mm. So when you... Because this requires capital, this requires backing. Mm. I, I'm, I'm thinking of the kid who's sitting at home and they draw really well and they've mm. got a narrative and they're creative mm. and they can match the, the story to the illustrations like you have. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the path? You did Super Strikers, mm. which was an amazing learning ground and yeah. you held us captive every single Sunday, mm. right? Mm. So mm. What, what, let's say I'm 14 years old and this is my dream, what do I do? So what you do, I, I suppose, as a point of departure, of course, you, you have to invest in your own talent. It's, uh. it's not, it's, it's, it's not, you know, the whole, the whole picture is not just having the talent, but, you know, what are you doing with it? How are you developing it? Mm. The skill set behind it. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, how far are you willing to invest in it in the actual property that you develop. Yeah. For instance, Ukwesi was um, self, you know, self-published for, 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 for years, for two years before it ended up at Exclusive Books, mm. for instance. So it's, it's a sacrifice. We are talking about, um, you know, terrain where we didn't have 
a really big comic book reading culture in any case. Yeah. And so to do a, a South African superhero story, then you have to, you know, you have to be very strategic as to, um, number one, is the story applicable to South Africans? Will they care about the character? And what you do is you actually speak to them in the language that they already know, mm. so that you, you, you win them over. We've got characters here that mm. So we are taking who we are mm. and, you know, um, and, and introducing a superhero genre onto it, mm. which is something that we've always needed in, in any case. We've always, I think we, we definitely have always needed to be represented differently than how we generally are yeah. as South Africans, and if black we South Africans. Writing the story, then it's a, we have the authority it. for that. Okay, so listen, yeah. I think you're the next big thing. Come on. Yeah, I really do. Uh, I, no, receive it, clap, receive it. I really think you're the next big thing. Thank I think you. this is phenomenal, especially since they come in so many languages as well. You know, you sit, you're like, oh, what do I buy my 14-year-old brother or my 13-year-old sister? This is what you buy them, the South African comic book hero. It's crazy. Make sure you check out Loisa's mind-blowing artworks on social media. Even makes everyday people like us look like superheroes. This yeah. conversation has without a doubt reignited my excitement for Black Panther. The mm -hmm. film is in theaters this Friday. I watched it last week. Trust me, it is phenomenal. Uh, Friday the 16th, Black Panthers out of South Africa. Make sure you get your tickets and make sure that you are dressed like African royalty. If you're not quite sure why you should be dressed like African royalty to the movie, have a look at this. Roll tape. I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh -huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? Hold up. Let's go. go. What happens to the rest of the world? Welcome back to Real Talk. Now, the original Color Purple uh, is the 1982 Pulitzer Prize winning novel by acclaimed author Alice Walker, who just turned 74 years old last week Friday, actually. Yes. Look, it's a story of a young woman who triumphs against unimaginable odds. The book was adapted into an Oscar winning film starring Whoopi Goldberg, Oprah Winfrey, and Danny Glover in 1985. Then in 2005, it was transformed into a theatrical masterpiece on Broadway. South Africa is one of the first international countries to stay the musical and here's a snippet of how it all came together I uh, couldn't be more thrilled than I am this morning it's taken a long time so the color purple has been staged twice in America once in London and the next staging is in South Africa with us I think that's something you should all be very proud about a beautiful script and music for South African audiences who understand this and understand what the story is about because we can relate. In the first two days for us, I think, was just so important because we all sat around and we literally analyzed the text and it was just amazing, like, finding out our characters and figuring them out. The show is around a community and funnily enough we automatically developed the sense of community amongst ourselves. Everybody's in high spirits, 
um, there's the media, um, cameras are clicking everywhere, you know. It's that whole paparazzi scene that's happening. <laughs> and when we start to sing and act, you can sense this kind of elation in the room. It's a great story that all South Africans must see. I cannot wait for Joburg to see this show. It's very exciting. So come through and see Color Purple and enjoy. I have the goosebumps. The goosebumps. I have the goosebumps. <laughs> and you think you wanted to be a town planner? I did. I wanted to be a geologist and a climatologist and a town planner. Anything to do with geography, really. Where did that passion come from? We'll discuss yeah. this later. The big yeah, yeah. person on stage, yeah. but where did the town planning come from? I don't know, I just, I really liked geography in high school. I mm. did it, um, I chose it as one of my senior subjects in grade 10, mm. and I just enjoyed it. And I mm. also enjoyed my teacher, yeah. uh, Mrs. Grant. She was just phenomenal. Uh, and I liked, teachers I liked, can do I liked that. mapping, finding things on maps, okay. and just like, yeah, it was fun. Okay, so <laughs> then you say, um, you you heard about the color purple and then you found out that they'd already cast the ensemble cast and you yeah. thought, ah, oh, it's left me. Yeah. Then your friend Catrice sends yes. you a WhatsApp <laughs> and she says, girl, they're still casting. You best go. <laughs> okay. She's like, this is a sign. This is a sign from the heavens. Just try it. Just give it a bash. Okay. And so that's what I did. And um, I wasn't even gunning for Celie. I was just, I mean, I, I, yes, this just I being to... part of it okay. really was just, I just wanted to be a part of the whole process. Yeah. And then, yeah, I went, um, I remember I went to a second hand shop mm. <laughs> before the auditions. To get like an outfit. <laughs> to get like a, a rock or, you oh. know, just to kind of like find something that would resemble Celie Nyana. Uh. And I found this, this white and blue dress with flowers. Do you still have that dress? I I still do. Please don't. You need to frame it and put it up <laughs> on, a, on a wall and yeah. like and just literally title it Road to Forever. Yes. Because another powerful thing I found that you said about your audition was mm. that you walked in and obviously you well researched, you've prepared, you, you've got the dress, but you walked in and you let all preparation go and you allowed yourself to be vulnerable. Yes. Why was that important? It's important because, I mean, obviously we walk into the audition process thinking that, okay, if... We, if things don't go to plan, then, uh, then you know, we messed it up. And yeah. I just thought, this is such... I, after watching Whoopi, Goldsberg, uh, Whoopi Goldberg's performance yeah. of Seeley, I thought, you know what? If I'm going to go into that audition, I have to try and be as authentic as possible yeah. with it. And so I just decided, you know what? If the tears come, they let come. them come. And just, just give your all. It's just that kind of uh, production yeah. overall, The Color Purple. Um, and I also, I read the book. So I, yeah. I, in my mind, I'm just thinking, you know what? I, I can't get there and try to be pretentious about it. Mm. Let me just get there, have fun with the audition, but mm. give my all. And I believe you said that Celie's belief system wasn't too far from your belief system when you were still growing up. Well, yeah, yeah. From, from a belief system that I, you know, sort of was conditioned into. Uh -huh. So, you know, growing up sometimes, like I was a very shy child. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, could, I just got so used to silencing my own personal voice, oh. right? And that is something that I've had to learn to deconstruct and destroy and let go of. Yeah. And so I understood, I understood where Celie comes from in terms of having to come out of her shell, yeah. in terms of um, having to find her authentic voice mm. and belief in mm. herself, self-belief. Mm. It's, I think it's an ongoing process and journey for me, but yeah, Celie's belief system is something I can definitely resonate mm. with, that I understand. It's something I know. So you don't see, I mean, because you said, you know, you were looking for a sign and, you know, the sign came that this role is yours. Then I read up that you went to, is it Indigo View? Yes, Indigo, um, Indigo View. View Actors Academy. Right. Which is run by uh, Stephen Feinstein. Who, who basically who, helped you find yourself. Yes. Okay. He, he helped me tap into my authenticity. He, you know, just planted the seed of self-belief in me as an actor. Yeah. Because I know, you know what, I came out of Vits. Yeah. And I just felt 
as though I wasn't necessarily ready for the industry. So what, do you feel like, okay, I've, I'm here, I've graduated, I've, I've learned all the skills, but I'm not on par with everyone else who's leaving here? I don't know if it was on par. I just think it was more of a self-belief thing. Okay. And it was a thing of just, am I ready for this? Is this something I really want to do? Well, I suppose there's a little bit of power in when you when you're just questioning your skill and yeah. not up no. against anyone else. No, and that is my that is my mindset completely, okay, you know, just going forward and just it's always been the way I've always thought. Yeah. I don't compete with others, I compete with myself oh, and I'm nice. just on a journey of trying to be a better version of myself every single day. Mm, so mm. yeah, I went to Indigo View Actors Academy and it I did a complete 360 in terms of just understanding myself as an actor, yeah. as a performer. Yeah. There was I was a lot more grounded and rooted. And then for the color for the auditions, yeah. I went to Stephen to uh, prepare for the so audition. So we refresh us, cause yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he helped me. He helped me really channel just the different facets of myself that I could apply to Seely in yeah. the audition. And then one day I get the call and I, I think after my mom, yes. I call Steven and I'm like, I got it! <laughs> You're like, if I get it, the Tony Award, I'm breaking it in half oh and it's God. staying at your house. And it's staying at your house. <laughs> yeah. So wait a minute, I'm, I'm not great at colors, but isn't indigo like a variation of purple? Yes! Isn't the universe so works am I the only one who sees I know. that like the universe is linking but it's a little freaky it's a it little is, freaky it is, it look is. I, I I'm going on Wednesday for Valentine's Day but I please yeah come. I'm definitely coming please come and I hear you are sensational do you know that you are or is that something you're gonna tell yourself at the end of the run so that you don't like get lost in in the praise now yeah definitely I, I think just being grounded in the story arc as a performer as an actor is just my focus mm. and I work with such an incredible cast mm. of established skilled mm. phenomenal actors mm. and singers that I learn from every single day and you will meet them mm -hmm. today yeah yeah and yeah I, I learn heaps and heaps from them every single day You're like and a sponge. That, I'm like a sponge yeah. learning you know just sucking off knowledge and that also roots me yeah it yeah does, yeah it does Listen, if you just joined us, we are hanging out with Didi Ntlekuno, who is one of the lead, uh, what is it called, lead members, lead cast, lead cast, let's go with that, in the color purple. It's running at the Joburg Theatre until the 4th of March. You are literally running out of time. Yes. Get your tickets and get got there. a month. <laughs> less the, than a month. Less than a month, yes. dude. And because also, Fabio short. After mm. the break, she's bold, she's tough, and doesn't take nonsense from everybody. Now, Mutawong joins Didi Ntle and I on this very couch. Come back to us. Welcome back. I am hanging out with the Thespians who are in the spell binding the color purple. It's at the Joburg Theatre until the 4th of March. I'm not, look, I'm not one to cause havoc and to make you stressed, but if you miss this, you really miss out. Harpo, who this woman? <laughs> These are the words that burst from Celie's lips when she meets Sophia for the first time. The character is embodied by the spirited Neo Mudaung, who has audiences cheering and laughing night after night on stage. We're so honored to have you here. Welcome, Neo. Yes, thank you so much. I just like the fact that your hair is matching your dress. Honey, <laughs> it best explains <laughs> who I am. I'm yes. just like, you, you just vast. You just Bona. honored yes. us, okay? Yes, yeah. I'm all it is. Like, what does Benam say? <laughs> Give them what they yeah. want. Bye, 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 bye. Yes. Okay, so listen. <laughs> Here you are. Yes. And I mean, you have some of the most poignant lines that happen in the color purple, I do. right? I do. Uh, are you, aren't you the one who's like, all oh, my life I had I'm a that one. fight. I'm that one. I'm there. Do you, when, when you are sitting in, in, the, in, the, in the writing room, in the rehearsal room mm. and all of that, like coming up to those lines, what goes through your mind? Yo. Yay. <laughs> Hey, okay. So me and Didi actually come from the same high school. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. So I was never really like That's in Clarkstop, yes. Yes. Clarkstop. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when I was in high school, I was very quiet. 
um, I wasn't really the it girl, you know, like how it is in high yeah, school. Yeah. If you're popular, I was actually really the very unpopular girl. Yeah. So every time I say, oh, my life, I had to fight, actually, I really mean it. You mean it. Yes. You mean it. So, yeah, it means a lot. Yeah. I think that's where I found the association with Sophia. Mm. Yes. And then, okay, naturally, you guys are from the same high school, mm -hmm. like, like you just said now, but how long does it take you guys to find a rhythm? Because... You know, at face value, you guys are supposed to hate each other, right? But then, okay. uh, uh, yeah, like, it's like, who, who are these people? But then, mm. not in real life. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, in, in, yeah, in the characters. Yes, yes. Please, I'm not trying to yes, start a fight yes, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Please don't. Because <laughs> yeah. I just thought, did it, like, okay. What? 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 So how do you find that rhythm mm. with somebody that you're going to be starring opposite, but, like, they're supposed to be that, like, push and pull between the two of you? Um, I think, I think it worked in our favor that we knew each other from a while ago. Uh -huh. But besides that, we were never really close anyway in high school. Mm. I think though, this time around, it, we like actually, we found like a common ground, a fine mm. line between what we need to achieve with this musical. Mm. Oh. And I think God left it for us to actually come close now. Yes. Yes. And our characters, it's like, it was, in the books, man. You know when yeah, something yeah, is written yeah, in the universe. Yeah. yeah. Yes, because we it gels beautifully. So, mm. Mm. me and Didi, we find that line, and it's not hard. Because mm. Sophia and Silly, they're actually mm. Sophia and Silly are uh, their relationship represents the importance of mm. sisterhood yes. ah. and of women being sources mm. of refuge to each other yes. and protecting one another. Yes. You know, I don't think we hate each other. Yeah. yeah. So Celie and yes. Sophia don't hate each other. Mm -mm. I mean, Celie makes the mistake of, you know, Harper of telling you. Harpo mm. that maybe you should, by beat taming her. Sophia's yeah. strength, you should beat her. But mm. they eventually, in the book, so in the novel, eventually mm. they make amends by um, uh, Celie and Sophia building yeah, a quilt, quilt, making yeah, a quilt yeah, yeah. together. Mm. And that quilt is symbolic mm. of, their, of their sisterhood, of their, of their friendship, mm. of the fact that they will always be together no matter what. Mm. They'll always be uh, there to protect each other. Mm. And that is very, uh, quite, it's quite relevant throughout the story. Even in the second act, Sophia comes in in a yes. scene and she's like, you need yes. my help when Mr. <laughs> comes in. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, in doing this research uh, for, for you guys, I came across an interview that Whoopi Goldberg did as she was cast in The Color Purple in the movie. And she says, the way I played Celie, Whoopi said, was to stand back from her. There's a theory that an actor should identify with the character. Mm -hmm. Well, I loved her, but I didn't identify with her. Celie is so far away from me, it was easy to allow her pain to be there because her life has so little to do with mine. Mm -hmm. So when you're attacking this role, mm -hmm. obviously you, you read the book and then you watch the movie. Mm -hmm. how, how much, like, because obviously you have to go in and watch it, but then stand back and bring nail to it, mm. right? So what's your process for that? You know, I can actually relate to what Whoopi just said, actually, Man. in that interview. Because Sophia is actually very confident and strong and firm. And I'm not, I don't think I'm totally the opposite. Mm. But I think I need a little bit of a hell no in myself as well. Like, okay. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sophia is very stern. She knows what she wants. She's not indecisive. Mm. Me, on the other hand, I can't choose. <laughs> one day I'm blue, one day I'm pink. You know, and I think I, think I needed a Sophia in my life. Yeah. I think she came at the right time yeah. in my life because I'm a single mom, you know? Oh. So I'm finding, I'm finding bits of pieces of Sophia in Nail. Yeah. And I'm using that also to channel her in in the show, yeah. actually, so yeah. And outside of the your own character, mm. um, you know, being Sophia and Celie, you know, naturally you walk away with things when you go home to yeah. your life, right? What are you taking away from the color purple? Mm. Uh, the importance of expressing your voice and understanding mm. that your opinions and your voice um, matters mm. your perspective of the world and of yourself is crucial and that is something that you should be working on and building towards mm. every single day as a human being bettering yourself as a human mm. being is important that and also no wait you said something and then you 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 carried on like you didn't say anything 
your perspective of yourself mm. matters. It matters. Mm. It's it so is crucial, crucial. <gasps> in 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 how you it, just in how you understand your position yes. in the world yeah. as a human being. Yeah, and um, how you can contribute to. Um, empowering and just uplifting mankind mm. in general. Because mm. there's a certain mm. perception that yes. you have to either be something, have something, be somewhere yes. for your perspective to count. Yes. yes. So what and it's see? always materialistic. Yes. 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 You know? yes. But our spiritual development is crucial. Mm. You know, it's a crucial mm. part of um, us just becoming better human yes. beings, you know. No. Well, just to add on to that, mm. yes, you need to find your perspective and understand who you are totally. Mm. But also don't be apologetic about it, you know. Mm. Mm. Say, this is who I am, and I don't care who, who mm. looks at me and who thinks what, what, what mm. of me. That's so important. I think that and not being apologetic about it. Listen, Didi Inta will be back later to play a fun game with her fellow cast members. Mm. Coming up next, an accomplished star of film, TV and theatre. It's his mm. second visit to Real Talk. And this time, we'll be talking mm. about his outstanding portrayal as the vicious <laughs> mister yes. in the colour purple, the musical. But before we go to a break, apparently y'all had promised me an a cappella something. How, 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 how? Three, two, one, hit it. <laughs> hey, go girls. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta clear the throat. Um, From where? We Just the chorus of this. the color purple. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm waiting for you because you got the key, honey. Yes, yes. Yes. Rising like the sun is the hope that sets us free. Your heartbeat makes my heart. Beat when we share love like a blade of corn, <laughs> like a honeybee, like a waterfall, all apart. And welcome back here on SABC3. This is Real Talk with Anele, and I've been chatting with the females who are in the cast of The Color Purple, the musical that's showing at the Joburg Theatre until the 4th of March. Now, joining Neo and I is a man who plays Mr. Who, when asked why he beats his wife, Celie responds, because she's my wife. A production that explores the themes of race, religion, love, sexuality and violence. Aubrey Poe's portrayal is multidimensional like we've never seen him before. And I know I say this all the time, that like, oh my word, you've, you, you've never been this good. And then you're just like, wait a minute, I'm not done. <laughs> this is you, you're like, wait, I'm not done. Yeah. So here you are in another role, Shining. And you said something so amazing to me earlier when I came down mm. to greet you guys. And you said, I'm so upset I'm in this because I'm not, I'm not able to watch it. Yeah, mm. well, I, I, I rephrased. Yeah. I rephrased an arrogant statement by Kanye, where he says, my biggest regret in life is that I'll never get to see me perform. Oh, so wow. I just needed, no, that's not my words, <laughs> but I just needed to sound more humble. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I it's, and, and you know, as fellow actors mm. who come through, they say, it's so good, I want to be in it. Yeah. And, and I've, the energy is, 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 is vibrant on that stage. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful story to be part mm. of. And to be backstage and hear some of the voices and hear oh. the, the, the audience's response to what gets done on stage. I'm just a You're mean bag of, <laughs> of potatoes like you on just stage. Wanna... <laughs> but here's the thing. You say you're just this mean person, but I feel like there are redeeming factors to Mr. Because, you know, you know, one second you just hate him and then the next thing is doing something and you're, you're singing something and you're doing it so well that you almost hit, people go, Oh. Mm. <laughs> well, you, we, we have an unforgiving lapse of time in the story. So what would take a whole chapter in a book, yeah. in the mm. movie, takes about five minutes, whereas in our show, it takes all of seven lines and then a song, yeah. which sometimes has got nothing to do with the scene that just happened. But, yeah. it's, but you're going to sing it anyway. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? um, and, and because of that, I, for me, I had to map that arc strongly and to make sure that I hit every poignant point yeah. within his journey. Otherwise, you have this meanie who yeah. the audience never feel anything for. Mm. No, I mean, 
you know, it's not lost on me, the timing of the color purple in South Africa at the mm. moment, right? Mm. So when you guys are sitting there and you're having discussions about who you are, how you're going to portray this, how you're making it fit to a South African audience, you know, them taking an American play, mm. do, do you have the discussion about abuse? Do you have the discussion about patriarchy and how no. you are going mm. to tackle it to... to no. To all enlighten the South Africans. All the time. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. I talk about it with my friends over drinks, and I say, guys, no. I think silly story has been told a lot of times, actually. It's yeah. not the first time we have a story like this about women, about women who've been raped. You I just mean, read the newspaper. You read the newspaper, told, it's there. Right? I think mm. now we are done. After the color purple, now we need to talk about Mr. Because yeah. the problem we are faced with as women is it's because Mr. of... And, you understand? Yes. And why, are, why we have such a need for yes, Mr., right? Yes, yes. I, I, I think my view has always been in tech. I mean, I've had, I've had a, an abuse storyline in another, mm. another project on his thing. And in thinking about it, I, I think the only way you'll tackle it is if you understand is if you make the perpetrator understand the pain and the and the destruction mm. they wreak in somebody's life and see the effects of that yeah. and that rehabilitates somebody yes. rather than you know you you preaching a message mm. which doesn't say do you actually understand and you mm. take somebody on a, on a psychological and, and an emotional journey mm. to really understand which i think this story does brilliantly for this character. Yeah. So uh, if, if there's a man that's a basher out there in our audience, yeah. I hope the story, you must, know, transforms yeah. it. Yeah, must reconsider. And little, yeah, yeah. Literally, <laughs> little by little, you know, you know you're not going to change someone's outlook one day, but, like, just the, the questions that they ask themselves, mm. you know, mm. after the play, that's all you, you're looking for. Mm. Mm. Now, <laughs> I heard... Oh, my gosh. You heard... I heard Oprah wrote you all a letter. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> what did Oprah say? <laughs> what did I, she say? I, I, she, yeah. It's amazing. I think she had a hand in us being the only country outside mm. of the States after the revival getting the rights to do it. Mm. And I think her having such a close relationship with this country, mm. not only through the school, but through mm. other initiatives yeah. as well, I think she thought it's 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 mm. the timing is right and it's very the narrative of the mm. color purple mm. is very relevant yes. Yes. and and i think south africa outside of america really well obviously we are in africa so you would yeah. have a concentration yeah. of black people yeah. Yeah. but i think just the parallel narratives between america or the black life experience in America yeah. mm. and yeah. the black life experience here, yeah, those parallel narratives, is something that's close to her heart. And now more than ever, is it not nice to, to find things that connect us outside of, of hip-hop? Yep. Right? Mm. And <laughs> our love and, and, and just entertainment and movies. Now mm. it feels like we're looking at each other and yes. it's like they're no longer going to call themselves African-American, we call ourselves African, now we're just black. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Nah? Mm. Yeah. Okay, yes. so now listen... Outside of, you know, you were saying the, the, a person who is a basher, a, a woman who is the best, outside of those people who must come and watch The Color Purple, who else must come and sit down and watch it? Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, we, we, were, we, were I mean... we were called in. Yeah. And we were, we were called in last week, Friday, and we were sitting, we were thinking, well, are you telling us that she's coming in on Sunday? <laughs> but we got... News that are second best to that. Yeah, mm. we've got Brenda Russell. Yes. We've got we've basically we've got the writers, the, writers the lyricists, in. and 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 the composers of mm. of mm. the Color Purple coming through specifically to see our version. I think we're rumored mm. to be the best cast in the world Look, currently. I'll take and it. And not just as a South African <laughs> no, flag. No, no, no. Yeah. I'll take uh, it. Yeah. I think we are the best mm. cast, and it's 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 a more hearty and spirited production mm. that mm. most people who've seen the Broadway production, but everybody should. I'm yes. telling you. No, yeah, no, 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 but everybody should. I think should it's not it. only a black story. Yeah. It's yes. a woman's story, it's a man's story. Mm. Yeah. Everybody should just come and watch it. Yeah. Mm. I'm just like, you know, I'm just seeing them, you know, like a spatula, the one where you flip an egg, ne? Yeah. yeah. They just take you guys and go like this and then put you at the West End yes. for like six months and yes. then take you and then put you in Broadway yes. Yes. for six <laughs> months and then take you and then put you back here for yeah. another six months. Listen, yeah. uh, stay with us after the break. Neo's here, Aubrey's here, and then Didi Ntle's gonna join us again. We're gonna play a bit of a game. 
where I'm going to ask them questions, right? But they have to answer the, uh, the questions in oh their character. Oh <laughs> so Monday. Aubrey's answering as Mr. Oh <laughs> it's gosh. all happening after the break. Come back to us. <laughs> Welcome back. Before we say goodbye to the stars of The Color Purple, the musical, I want to ask them a few questions. Look, they're easy, but there's a twist. They must answer the questions in the voice of the characters they play in The Color Purple. <laughs> they said to me, Anneli, it's Monday and you make us work. This is our day, <laughs> this is our day <laughs> off. I'm like, what ifs? KSFC <laughs> 3 OK, here we go. I'll start with you, didn't uh, Describe yourself in three words. I am resilient. I am joyful, and I am here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aubrey, oh. uh, as Mister, mm. what what's a must-have on your plate on Sundays? Chicken. <laughs> and uh, greens, vegetables. Some vegetables. Some vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Off my plate, a glass of wine. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're coming to you. Where would you never go again? Well, <laughs> high school. Uh -huh. My high school? Never go again? Mm. My God. No, I'd go back there, actually. That's <laughs> good. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Did you say we'll come to you? Would you rather buy a good book or a pair of shoes, and why? I'd rather buy a book, a good book. Mm. I'd rather buy a good book over a pair of shoes any day, mm -hmm. cause I love to read. I love to just take in. Uh, knowledge from words. I love working with words, reading words, all of that. I love, I'd rather buy a book every day. Yeah. Uh, a pair of shoes. Yeah. In fact, I'd rather, I'd rather have my mama buy me a pair of shoes than, <laughs> and they, yeah. Aubrey, uh. who do you still need to meet and what is your opening line to them? Former President Obama. Mm. Former President Obama. Mm. How you doing? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the man, how you, do how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Neil, yeah. uh, let's come to you. Do you prefer hugs or handshakes and why? I prefer hugs, honey. Why? Because I want it all in. <laughs> <laughs> I want it all in. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK, did you say, uh, which role out there is still got your name on it, mm. uh, be it a play, be it a movie, be it in a series, and why? And then you have to give us a little line from there. Oh, my goodness. To be honest with you, <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I think it's kind of weird that uh, actors know what roles they want to play. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think because I'm a young actor, anything that comes my way is kind of like, OK, let me take this. I'll take this. <laughs> She, I don't mind. I'm sweating so much. <laughs> I'm just having so much fun. All right, uh, Mister. Sorry, I'm even calling you Mister yeah. now. Okay, Mister, Mister, Mister. Talk on. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Where in the world do you want to travel to next? Cuba. Why? I want to smoke a fat cigar. Mm -hmm. Have uh, what, what, what? What they got? What, what they make? What, what they? What they specialize in? <laughs> Rum? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't. Well, have be in be in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Smoke a fat cigar. Mm -hmm. And 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 just just see the architecture and then, mm -hmm. and ride in one of those one of them old cars. One of them old cars. <laughs> I, I want to be out there. Yeah. Want to be out there and then go and and. and See, see what the Cubans have got to offer. I, th I think this country has got a close relationship historically and politically uh -huh. with, with Cuba. So yeah, I, th I think that's where I want to be. OK, all right now, all right now. <laughs> now I'm coming to you. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All know. right. Um, <laughs> who makes you better at what you do? My baby. 
Mm. Yeah. She, how old's your baby? She's a year and six months. Okay, and yeah. how, how's she making you better, honey? Well, every time I wake up, mm -hmm. I know I'm doing it for her. Oh. Yeah. What you, what she call you? She called me mama. Oh. Well, she can't call me nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> she can't call me nothing else. Right. See the mama or nothing. Yeah. Mama. Mama. Mama, 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 nothing else. Mama's whole life. Right. Don't she slip up and call you nails sometimes? Mm, no, she calls all the females mama. So. <laughs> I know <But> that. <laughs> actually, I prefer that. Mm -hmm. No, mama. She calls okay, me mama. guys, give them a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. I know I made you guys. What were you saying? Yeah, I'm saying I'm, do you want it in an accent or do you? <laughs> I, 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 I just want it. My, my daughter, I think when she was one, she's, there were times when she'd call me mama. And I would, I'd look at her and I'd go, but what's this? But I got to understand yeah. it's a profound thing. Mm. Anybody that was a caregiver in her life yes. was mama. So I thought, okay, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make wow. peace with it. Yeah. Oh, but when she went, papa went, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always out here growing his beard. This <laughs> is like nobody won't call me mama no more. <laughs> Listen, guys, didn't think, didn't try. Thank you so much. You're yeah, wonderful, Nev. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, Aubrey yeah. is always wonderful. Yeah. The color purple. Mm, yes. Okay. Uh, up until the fourth of March at the yes. Joburg Theatre. Like yes. I said, I'm definitely going on Wednesday. We should fill up the seats that people are outside crying, saying we want to get in, and we're like you can't. Yeah. Fill up Joburg Theatre. Joburg Theatre. All right. Yes. Tomorrow we're not gonna be here with you because protein fire is taking over they bowled and made an over okay so let's support the guys we'll be back live on wednesday it's valentine's day guess who's going to be here java with his boo thing lerato they're going to be here we're going to be talking his career her career the love and how they share it together man we'll check you out later easy thing was up next don't go anywhere Bye. <laughs>